I shall wear a I will never know
be sitting right now on your job, in your home, wherever. And you're trying to figure out this thing that we call life, what's going on. And you're afraid to reach out to a loved one. But if you go back in time and you have to say to yourself, every time I needed him, he was really there. Every time I called on him, he was really there. When we needed him. But what about the time when we need him the most? When it comes down to something that we did to ourselves, who can you call on then? I know I can call on to the God that's inside of me. And this is what I'll say. Deliver me Cause all I see you do is Hurt me Hurt me Lord Deliver me Cause all I seem to do is hide me, oh Lord, yeah, hide me, yeah, yeah, Lord, deliver me, cause all
give myself away so you can come on let him know I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away would happen as a generation embrace this come on tell him here I am here I am
take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the king. Truth is, I'm tired. Options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't fake what's left to do. Come, truth is, I'm no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die. to 
a place where there'll be nothing, nothing to do but simply walk around heaven all Get together and walk around heaven all day. your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas saith unto Lord, Lord, we don't know where are you going? And how can we know the way? Jesus replied and said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, 
even though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. But his anger is but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Job asked the person in Job chapter 14. He says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But his question was simply this. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my life, I'll wait until my change has come. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Go on. Sometimes we have to go back Do 
A service of celebration for Sister Charlene Ross with us December the 17th, 1962. With him October the 12th, 2020. Sunday, October the, the 20th, 2020, 2 30 p.m. We're going to follow the program as it is printed. And if there are any changes, they will come from the family. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I when I look around and uh, I think things over all of my good days outweigh my my bad days and I I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, Lord, why so much pain? But He. for me although my weary eyes they can't see I'll just say thank you Lord I I won't complain cause God has been so 
good to me. He's been real good to me. More than this old world, more than this old world, or you could ever be. He's been so good to Tis away, turn my midnights into day. So I'll just say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain, cause God has been so good to me he's been real good to me more than this old world or you could ever be he's been so good he's been so good he's been so good to me he drives is away turn my midnights into day so instead of complaining I learn how to lift my hands and say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I've been lied on but thank you Lord I've been talked about but thank you Lord body is sick body racking with pain but thank you Lord I I, I won't complain For our Old Testament scripture, I just want to recite one verse from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and verse number 31. And here's what Isaiah records in that 31st verse. He's asked a question. He's asked us, has thou not known, has thou not heard? But he says in verse 31, and may you find comfort in these words of Scripture, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Right now, you may seem weary, but one day, God's going to lift you up, and you're going to fly away on eagles' wings. You're going to run, and you're not going to go weary in running. You're going to walk, and you'll never grow faint in walking. Wait, I say on the Lord. New Testament scripture. Second Corinthians fifth chapter. Starting at verse one. <clears throat> it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hand, eternal 
in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed with our inhabitants, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan in burden, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are in or at this house, in this body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. He told Father, the maker and the creator of all mankind. Lord, we come on a time like this, realizing that you are God, and besides you, there's no other. We realize that you have brought us from a mighty, mighty long ways. Lord, you told us in your word that you were going away to prepare a place for us. And if you go away and prepare a place for us, you said that you was coming back. And Father, we do ask, Lord, for your spirit. We ask your, for your strength. Lord, in these times, we realize, Father, that seem like we're at the crossroad. Lord, and we don't know which way to turn. But I heard you said, whenever you need us, all we had to do is call upon your name. So Father, we are calling, we are calling upon you right now. We are praying for the Ross family. Realize, Father, that they are lost a loved one. But, oh, Heavenly Father, we know that one day, one day is coming that we'll be able to see our loved ones again. So, Father, if you'll just keep your loving arms around the family today, able them to realize that you have all power and all power is in your hand. Pray, Father, that you would comfort, comfort their hearts and their minds. Even their own Father, to know that you got all that they need. So, Father, keep them, keep them in your care. Walk with them and talk with them. Be their Father when when the, the lonely nights are come about. But I know, Father, you said, uh, I'm going away. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. So I said to the Ross family, look up and look to the hills from which cometh your help, for all of your help uh, come from thee. And then, Father, um, 
bother when it's uh, yours to call uh, and when it's ours to answer. Uh, Father, we want to hear that welcome voice. Uh, send servant, servant, uh, well done. Thou had been faithful over a few things. Come on up higher, I'll make you rule over many. In the name of Jesus, for Christ's sake, amen, amen. Some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go, but I am sure. One thing that God has been real, and I can feel Him deep within. Some folk may doubt, some folks may scorn. All can desert and leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part. God has been real, and I can feel. Him in my heart, I can not tell just how you feel when Jesus took your sins, sins away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been real, and I can feel His holy power. And oh, yes, God is real. He's really in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. And oh, it is love for me. It's like beer gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. And oh, yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for He has washed 
and made me whole. And oh, it's love for me. It's like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. And oh, yes, God is real. He's really in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. And oh, his love for me. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my Good afternoon. I would like to acknowledge four resolutions and four cards. I will read one resolution and one card at the request of the family. Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church number 2, 2506 North College Avenue, El Dorado, Arkansas. Reverend Felton F. Fergie, Pastor. Resolutions. Sister Charlene Ross, to everything <clears throat> there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Ecclesiastics 3.1. There is a time to laugh, a time to cry, a time to be born, and a time to say goodbye. A loved one has parted from this earth and for another land to a city not made by hand, whose builder, whose builder and maker is God. Whereas we have gathered here today as a result of the home going of Sister Charlene Ross, be it resolved that we, the Morning Star Number Two Church family, express our deepest sympathy. May the family rely on Jesus, who can, who can and will heal all sorrow. For our Father in heaven knows what is best. He will comfort you during your time of sorrow. Be it resolved that we draw closer together and ever cherish the member of this, our dear sister, and emulate and emulate the admirable traits that she had. Be it further resolved that a copy of this sentiment be sent to the family and a copy be kept on record at our church. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21 verse four, humbly submitted Reverend Felton Berge, Pastor, Sister Natasha Henderson, Assistant Clerk. I acknowledge a resolution from Snow Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Curtis Tatum. Uh, First Baptist Church, Reverend Calvin Carroll, Pastor, Sister pa Melba Parson, Church Clerk. A resolution from the class of 1981 and a resolution from Sims Mortuary. A journey remembered. Some people journey through life, they leave footprints wherever they go. Footprints of kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. Even when they are gone, we can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind a trail bright with hope that invites us to follow. Praying you will all be comfort with precious memories and God's presence to care for you and your loss. With sympathy, Sean and Yolanda Bradford. Charlene, the encourager. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. 
I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 7. The Lord graced this earth with an amazing encourager, Charlene Ross, born in El Dorado, Arkansas, on December 17, 1962, to the loving parents Charles E. and Elizabeth Ross. She was the oldest of three daughters, and she fiercely, fiercely loved and protected her sister. At an early age, Charlene accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal savior at Snow Hill Baptist Church, smack over Arkansas. She later joined the inspiring body of Christ under the leadership of Pastor Ricky Rush. Charlene was a graduate of Smack Over High School. After finishing school, she moved to Dallas, Texas, which she loved. She completed training in Job Corps, which she thoroughly enjoyed. Charlene's former employment includes Continental Bakery, Wonder Bread Bakery, and lastly, Dallas Area Rapid Transit transit, dark, where she spent many years driving and where she built a long-lasting friendship with her co-workers. Although small in stature, she was a skilled driver who could wheel a huge city bus like she was driving a regular-sized vehicle. Charlene was always joyful to see those she called family and friends. She enjoyed fishing, camping, barbecuing, watching movies, and reading, especially her Bible, which was well-worn. She loved music and collected unique knives. She was a charitable person who often did random acts of kindness. She was full of wisdom, opinions, love, and consistently and reliably, reliably offered encouragement to anyone in need, especially her family and friends. She was famous for her birthday calendar and called or texted everyone on their special day as expressions of her love for them. Her greatest love was being with her family and friends. Charlene was known for her pressed, polished style, which included cowboy boots and unique belt buckles. She was very overly organized, and everything had a specific place. Charlene always kept her vehicles clean and was strict about the care and maintenance. She was outspoken, and most of all, she was well known to do things her way. Charlene was tiny in stature, mighty in love. Her memories will forever be cherished by her loving parents, Charles E. and Elizabeth Ross, two devoted sisters, Tanya, Tony Meeks, and Belinda Gale Ross, a longtime beloved friend, Devonia Neal, a favorite furry nephew pup, Bandit Meeks Moth, Aunts Erling Dunn <clears throat> of Smackover, Vera Jones of Mount Holly, Curly Brown of Holly Springs, Joanne Ross, Inglewood, California, Joan Ross, Smackover, Arkansas, Michael Mack, Oakland, California, Uncles W.C. Ross, Freddie Jewel Ross, both of Flint, Michigan, Ben and Effie of Atlanta, Georgia, Julius and Gloria Ross of Flint, Michigan, Eddie and Fundia Ross, El Dorado, Arkansas, James, Eddie Joe, Matt of Dublin, California, adored godsons, Derek Henry, Walata Henry, Ibimalik Henry, Asa Henry, Sostine Henry and Onismas Henry, and a host of other relatives, co-workers, and friends who she always kept in touch with. Poem of Life. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be a resting place along the road. To sweet eternity, we all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We were, we're, we all were meant to learn something, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey's slow, and when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. The loving family of Charlene Ross would like to express their special thanks to Methodist Dallas Medical Center specialists, doctors, nurses, and chaplains 
Hazel Palmer Edwards, Michael L. Lewis, Jackie Ross, Ronisha Williams, Hurley Ross, Sylvia Cole, Cherie Gibbons, Sheila Arnold, Eddie Miller, Kendrick McElroy, and Brenda Jones. We thank each and every one of you for any acts of kindness, love, food, calls, prayers, and anything that has been done to help during this time. Sleep on, CC. Take your rest. At this time, we will have uh, remarks from family, friends, and the class of 1981. And we do ask that you limit your remarks to two minutes. Two minutes, please. this really quick. I just want to tell two cousins about two stories about my cousin Charlene. The first was in her obituary. I got a random call. It wasn't a birthday. It was my <laughs> my high school graduation. I don't know why she had it 15 years later, but she called to say it was my anniversary. I was like, okay. Anyways, um, I just want to say, you know, growing up, my cousin Charlene was always there for me. And I didn't understand it because she wasn't like the cool auntie. And she wasn't a dis disciplinary, but recently during this COVID, we had a, a random conversation and we talked and she told me, you know, that she never had children, but she always considered me and Jade and Zay and Amore, the Dallas crew as her children. And I didn't get it, but I'm gonna keep this sweet. I just wanna say, I get it now. She was part of the village and thank you, Charlene. Hello, I don't know if y'all can recognize me with my mask on, but it's Lynette Goodwin on behalf, and I have to say this, of Rosemary Freeman Goodwin family. We have spent a lot of time together with this Ross family. Even when we were small, we stayed at their house a lot of days, and our family is so intertwined I just think it would have been a disservice if I didn't say something. I'm going to miss my dear friend. Charlene and I was really, really close coming up. And once she moved to Dallas, we did. Uh, you know, when people move away, you lose contact with them. But she did call a lot. <laughs> but I want to say it's okay to mourn because, you know, and I'm going to keep this real brief. Jesus mourned when he heard Lazarus passed away. Okay, when he saw Mary and Martha, he broke away in tears. Not because he was so sad, but because he knew that he felt pity for them. But yet and still, he knew he was there to do something special. And that special thing that he raised Lazarus from the dead, he's gonna do it for all of us too. So just wait on that time, mourn if you need to, rejoice when you need to, Talk about it when you need to. Memories will come, enjoy that. But soon and very soon, we're gonna be able to hug her and say, girl, here we are again. Let's do it again. I love you guys and y'all take care, okay? Cause I'm probably gonna have to leave before service go cause I get to get back to work tonight. But I just want to come see you and I love you. Hello. Um, Charlene and I were cousins. 
we weren't first cousins. I don't know how it goes down the line, but <laughs> we met in a, I'm from, I grew up in California and we would come to smack over uh, for the summers. And that's when we met Charlene and Gail and Tanya and we formed a special bond. And uh, when I moved to Dallas and Charlene was in Dallas, we, uh, Charlene was more like a sister to me. I could call her whenever I needed her. That was my daughter that came up first. Charlene was so instrumental in helping me with my children, with anything that I needed. Um, I tell her, I said, you missed your call and she could fix anything. We hung ceiling fans, put furniture together, cut trees. I could always call her and she was always dependable. And when she got sick, you know, my daughter and I would always check on her and because of COVID, you know, it's like, well, you can't come in, but check on her, see what she needs. And I saw Charlene that Saturday before she went into the hospital. And she told me, she said, cousin, I'm scared. And I said, well, what are you afraid of? I said, you're going to get better. She said, no. She said, I'm afraid of dying. She said, I'm not afraid of death. I'm afraid of dying. She said, I don't know what that's going to be like. And I know that when Charlene was passing over, I know that God dispatched his angels to help her across and to help her on the other side because she said, I know where I'm going. I already know where I'm going. I'm just, I don't know what it's gonna be like getting there. But I know that God put his angels and his arms around Charlene and he ushered her home. And I know that she is home and we will miss her. I know I will. I wake up this morning, this week, and I said, Lord Jesus, I just can't believe that Charlene's not here anymore. Because no matter what was going on, if it was good, I'd call her. If it was bad, I'd call her. And one thing she always gave me was whatever I needed, words of encouragement, or she'd tell me, you know better. You know, you, you know better. You know you were raised better. You know how to do better. So we had a very special bond. And to the family, I love you all. And I know you love me. I love Charlene. And I knew without a doubt that Charlene loved me and my children. Good afternoon, everyone. And for you guys out there that knew Charlene Rhodes, you would loosen up a little bit because everybody in her type. We know that she was a joyous person. So y'all loosen up. I'm sure this man is gonna bring the word today. But my little experience with the Ross family, because Charlene is a representative of that family and it shares with everybody in the community. We see everyone here today. And I share this little special thing that's been said several times. Charlene always called and checked on everybody. And she treated me like her brother. And it's a little thing we can all do here today, and it could probably change the world. If you look out, everybody here was cool with Charlene. She checked on you. And we would make her happy if you just did the same. Just one month, you just like, I'm gonna call and check on somebody. Cause Charlene always checked on me. Hey, big head. And, and you know, and it would be God's time always the right time. We don't understand this today and it ain't for our understanding because he needed her up there. Amen. And you know she up there being happy and saying something funny. Amen. But uh, if we could just do the Charlene Challenge and just check on one another, this few people out here could change the world. And it can all start with the Rosses. Because whenever you drop by the Rosses, they make you feel at home. And so as we leave this place and lift Charlene up and let the Lord do his work. We just be happy and check on one another. That's what the world needs now. Thank you. I'm from Dallas and I'm a friend of, I call her CC. We've been friends for a long time and I, she was a great friend. And when I first met her, I seen her smile and I knew she was a good person. So I made her my son's godmother. My son is in heaven now with her. And I know that everything is okay regardless. I'm gonna miss Cece. She was calling me before, she, two weeks ago maybe. 
and I didn't get a chance to see her when I heard she was gone, man. I made this trip because I miss her. I missed her in my life, but I had so much going on, I didn't get to see her. But I love Cece, and she was a great friend, and she made my son happy while he was here. So I want to thank God for her and bless her heart and bless the family. Thank you. Hi, we are the class of 81. We are here representing the wonderful class and we all love each other. The greatest class of all. We were a close-knit group then and we've remained that way since 40 years since we graduated. Charlene was loved by all. She came across as tough tough as nails, but she'd give her shirt off her back. She'd do anything for anyone. She would, um, after the 35th class reunion, Charlene showed up as everybody left. <laughs> but some of us were still there. We had the best time. We got together. We reminisced, we talked about old things, old times, classmates, laughed till we couldn't laugh anymore. Since then, I have been taking lots of late night calls from Charlene. We're both night owls. We talked about all the class people, family, friends, our thoughts, what we liked. She was a great athlete. She loved camping. She and I had that in common. Um, she loved her family with all her heart. Um, I started to call her about two weeks ago. My phone rang. I got busy and I didn't make that call. And I, I hate that I did not make that call. Uh, Charlene, we could talk for hours, hours on end, and um, I'm just going to say that we love everyone in our class. We really love Charlene. We've missed, we have lost too many in our class. Never put off that phone call, never put off that hug. We will miss her. And uh, we will see her one day in that great reunion. And um, when someone you love becomes a memory, that memory becomes a treasure. And uh, again, she will always be remembered and we will always love her. Thank you. My name's Derek. Um, I was sitting there and I was gonna let the moment pass, but <laughs> Charlene was saying, "You don't have nothing to say about me. <laughs> you gonna let the whole thing? You not gonna say nothing about me, guys?" Um, everybody pretty much summed up everything as far as who she was. Um, for me, she was a second mother, um, and she wasn't afraid to um, show you that she loved you. She wasn't afraid to uh, tell you when there was a need or. Or anything. I mean, she always reached out. Uh, she was, she like she said. Somebody said earlier, she was, she appeared tough on the exterior, but she was just as gentle as she could be. And uh, she gave hard. She gave hard. She she always put herself out there. She met me and my brothers when we were young, and uh, immediately when her family, when she introduced us to her family, um, they they embraced us. If y'all know the Rosses, everybody knows the Rosses. They embraced us as family, and uh, never let go. Never let go. Uh, she's always been a part of my life. It was hard hearing it, and it's, it's going to be hard. She's going to be missed, but I can tell you I got a chance 
I took some time off work and uh, it was a week and I had planned all this stuff that I was going to do. But um, she called me. And when I tell you I spent the majority of my vacation serving other people, her being one of them, and I spent a great deal of time with her fixing her sprinkler system and because she was so winded she couldn't do a lot of things, but I did it. And I look back at the time that I got to spend with her over the last two months and God knew. And he, he just he said, hey, this is, this is it. This is going to be your opportunity to, to soak up the rest of Charlene. And, and he gave me that opportunity. And all of you that knew her, whatever moment, whether you got a phone call with her or whatever, God gave you an opportunity to speak to her for the last time or embrace her whenever your last moment was. But I kept thinking I, I didn't get a chance to say bye. But I did. I really did get a chance to say bye. And I went by the house and I told Gail, I said, I, I got to go by the house one last time because I know when she got to heaven, she was telling God, hey, show me my house from up here, you know. And so I... I and, I, I love her and I'm going to miss her, but she touched many lives and I'm thankful that God shared her with me and I know you all are too. So thank you. Well, I know everybody's about trying to make it. But anyway, this is a day that I know nobody ever want to see. But I'm here with my uh, first cousin, Devonna, and uh, I'm her, like her big sister. And see, she was a part of our family, a, a part that we'll always cherish her because we always had good times together. And I got a lot of pictures of C doing all different kind of things, fishing and just we, we partying together and everything. And the first day that I met C, and it was at a party and she was at the bar. And I went to the bar to get me a drink, but I don't drink. But I went to get a drink anyway. So anyway, she's sitting at the bar and I was behind her. And she said, you can come on up here. And I walked on up there beside her and she said, she said, oh, she say, oh you Joe got some beautiful eyes. I said, well, I thank you. So she said, what you drinking? I say, I'm drinking whatever you drinking. So she had a little bottle of uh, tequila sitting up there. And uh, I said, okay then, well, give me a shot of that. She said, uh-uh. She said, the bottle over there. She said, I'm gonna let you pour your own troubles, right? So I pulled me a little drink and everything. So we've been like best of partners ever since. And I talked to C most of like every day because her and Bonner was together all the time. If we went out there trucking, and she wanted to be in that truck too, but after a while she just couldn't be in the truck. But we talked every day, all the time, and her and Vonna, they would have a little chorus talking about, now that's my Donna May. See, uh-uh, that's my Donna May. <laughs> Vonna would say, I knew my Donna May first. She said, yeah, but she mine's now. <laughs> so we just would have such good times and everything, and I'm just gonna miss her and my mama, she would call her and ask her how she doing and everything. My mama just loved her to death. And uh, of yesterday is the first is uh, been uh, one year since my mother passed. Yesterday, and right before my birthday, she got me right before my birthday. But I'm gonna take all her memories. I'm cherish all of them. I'm gonna keep looking at the pictures and I'm gonna keep crying. <laughs> I just loved her so much. And then one time she told me, um, when me and my boyfriend had broke up, she said, you know what, we're going to find you somebody. I said, girl, if you don't find me nobody as cold-blooded as you, don't even look. Because <laughs> can't nobody get as cold-blooded as you, see? <laughs> and then it's just time we met at the, at the restaurants and stuff. We just had so much fun out of the whole 10 years. And it's like, I'm just going to miss her a lot. And I just want to let everybody know I'm with Devonna and her family. And we just loved her. We just, we loved her. She was just a person down to earth. You just could just start a conversation with. And it, that was it, you know. So, but, you know, I don't, I don't come across and especially missing my mom. Yesterday was her day, you know. And now we're celebrating C-Day. 
but we're going to celebrate with all the members and everything. We know they are uh, uh, taken care of very good upstairs. And they're looking down, partying like they normally would be doing. My mama and them dancing and she dancing or whatever. And we will be joining them sooner or later. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't let this time go by without me saying something. I'm the mother of her godsons. When I first met her, I met her through my sister. And she was so excited about us going to meet her family. And when we met her family, they just embraced us with so much love. We felt like we was family already. And um, the reason that I adored her so much is because my sisters, I have five sisters, but she's uh, she said that, my sister said, if something happened to her while the boys are little, we're going to separate them. And, and Charlene stepped up. She said, no, we will not separate them. Me and my, if we take me and my family, we're going to take care of them boys and we're going to keep them together. And I appreciate her for that. And she always remember people's birthdays. But I'm going to miss her. I love you, family. Everybody here? I am Gail, for those who don't know. My dad was talking to one of his friends one time. And he told him that the way he describes us is, if you want someone to save your money, you get Charlene. If you want somebody to take care of you, you get Tanya. And if you want somebody to take care of business, you get Gail. And he hit it, he hit the nail on the head. Our family and I want to thank everyone for being here. We thank you for sitting in the sun. I know it hasn't been easy. Thank God there were umbrellas. But the love that we see out here means so much. It means so much. She loved people. She loved her family. She was happy to see her family. And I'm standing here. I didn't think I would be able to do it. I was going to write it out. Every time I go to write it, I couldn't finish it. She left instructions for a lot of things, and I hope I have remembered every one of them and carried them out. One of the things I want to impart to everyone is love your family and check on them. When I compare myself to what she did, I felt like I'm a slacker because she called, she went, she texted. She would tell me sometime, I called so-and-so and they didn't call me back. I said, well, Charlene, when people don't call me back, I feel like they don't want to be bothered and I don't call them anymore. She said, well, I'm calling them again. That's God. He don't give up on us. He's going to continue to call us, and that's how she was. She was just going to call back, and she was going to eventually talk to him. And I was like, well, maybe I should ease up a little bit. But, you know, that was just her. Every one of us have our own struggles, things that we go through. Remember that when people are struggling, it's not because they want to be. Never give up on them. Continue to call them. Continue to love them. I don't care what is going on with them. I don't care what they abuse, what their issue is. All of us have something that we could do better. But continue to love your friends and your family. She left something here for all of us to do, as our friend Sean stated. He did. The, he said it all. If nothing else is said, that was it. We know she wasn't a stuffy person. We know she loved people. And if we do what he said, I think it'll change all of our lives. When I get sad about her, I think about the work that's to come. Some of the people, you know, she did things big. She, she wasn't a slacker on things. Most of you may have a godchild. She had six. One family, six of them. And I want them to stand up. I want you to give these young men a hand. These are some nice young men, and she has kept in touch with them. We remember them from little on up, one of them when he was born. And I am so proud of them. And I'm so proud of all of the Texas people. Can Texas stand up?
when you can get that many people to come from afar, that means something. That, that means a lot. Smack over El Dorado, I mean, Texas, Arkansas, all of y'all, Michigan, y'all have shown out. I mean, the calls, you have kept my parents going, you have kept my sister going. Just to call and say, I don't know what to say, there are no words. That means so much, because there are no words. And if you don't try, just the thought that you call means so much. Tanya told me to shorten it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, she told me Georgia, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Looking out for all of y'all. I forgot about that. Thank you. But um, I do want to say that um, when the time that she was in the hospital, um, I kept in touch with the doctors. They probably got tired of me calling, but I called um, as often as I could. Devonna was right there. And between Devonna, myself, and Hazel, it, we could make sense of everything. And Hazel kind of walked us through it, and I will never forget that. We didn't know what was going on because we were so far away. We didn't understand sometimes what the doctors were saying, but she would explain it to us. But my last phone call was at 2.20 um, the morning of and the nurse didn't want to let me speak to her. But I told us, I don't have to talk to her. I just want you to let her know that I'm calling and our family is concerned about her. And tell her I'm on the phone, and she did. And she must have asked to speak to me. Trouble in my way I have to cry sometimes Oh, so much trouble I have to cry sometimes I lay you awake at night But that's all right Oh, I heard him say, gee After a while Trouble in my way I have to sigh sometimes I have to sigh sometimes I lay you awake at night But that's all right Yeah, I heard her say, gee After a while Yeah, I stepped in the furnace a long time ago, it's got rocking me, Shaq, and the Bendigo. Yeah, they was not worried, but this I know. Yeah, I heard them say, gee. say amen. amen. How many of you know Jesus will fix it? How many of you can testify and say it's already fixed? Amen. 
certainly we give all honor and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. We thank God for his son Jesus, who paid the price for our sins. That when this day comes, if we have accepted him as our Lord and as our Savior, the scripture says to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. We thank God for our co laborers in the gospel, Pastor Curtis Tatum of Snow Hill Baptist Church, our own Reverend Lee Sanders. Thank God for the pastors on the staff of the Sims March area, Pastor Jan Elliott, Pastor Doug Morris, to Reverend Henderson, I see present to all ministers here today. We thank God for you all, to my wife and her absence, and to all preacher's wife, pastor's wife, to this family, the Ross family, amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise for the Ross family, amen. <laughs> now let's give the Lord a big hand clap for Charlene, amen. amen. We're not here today because Charlene is dead. But we're here today because she lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, I won't be long, but I must piggyback when I talked to her on Saturday. Her and Gail called me, and she wanted me to pray for her. Amen. Amen. And when you have your business fixed, you know who to make connection with. Amen. Amen. We don't know what Charlene and the Lord talked about last week. Amen. But whatever it was, it was their business. Amen. 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 And there's nothing that I can do to help Charlene. There's nothing that I can do to hurt her. Amen. Amen. Because Charlene is in the best care. She's with Jesus. Amen. 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 And we're so grateful for that. Amen. We thank God for mom and dad and the sisters. Amen. Whom I love dear. Amen. Amen. And I'm grateful that they saw enough to ask me to stand and speak a few words amen? amen there is a word from the lord and we do get reference to our sins march every staff thank them amen? amen come go with me to the book of saint john the 20th chapter verse 1 through 2. you will find these scriptures recorded early on the first day of the week mary magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark when she saw that the large stone had been moved away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the follower whom Jesus loved. Mary said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. I want to talk this afternoon for a little while. I want to discuss the death of death. The death of death. My brothers and sisters, this afternoon, sooner or later, all of us will experience death. If death does not get us, the Bible said that we will be caught up in the rapture. Some may be walking, some may be at work, some may be talking, whatever you may do. Sooner or later, death will come your way. And the good thing about death is it's not prejudice. You don't have to be sick for death to come knocking at your door. Because the scripture gives clarity that it has been appointed unto man once to die. And then it said there will come a judgment day. But for those who are not born again, death is a big issue with you this afternoon. Because if you're not born again, there's only two places, or there's one place that you will spend eternity. Both of them start with an H. Either you're going to heaven if you're saved, or if you don't know Christ, you're going to bust hell wide open. And I don't want to live here on earth and catch hell and then die and go to hell. I know it's a little warm out here, but I need to tell you about hell. Hell is real hot. Fans don't do you no good there. And so it behooves all of us this afternoon to, to not look at nobody else. And you don't even have to feel sorry for Charlene because Charlene is in a better place. But it behooves each and every one of us to look at our own selves and ask ourselves that if Christ would come right now, where would I spend eternity? And I need to tell you, brothers and sisters, that the death rate is at a rapid pace. 
Sooner or later, we all must leave this place and we, we must go to another place where there will be no more death. And the good news is this afternoon, Charlene had her business fixed. I'm not talking about what we talked about last week, but Charlene and I talk every week or every other week. And, and her main subject was about Christ. She wanted to know more and more about Christ. And, and, and don't look at nobody now because all of us, I heard Michael Jackson said, there's a man in the mirror. And all of us, the Bible said, have seen and come short of the glory of God. And so all of us, if you be honest, all of us right now, we're no more than filthy rags in the eyesight of God. But the good news here this afternoon is that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible said he came down through 40 and two generations. He hung, bled, and died on an old rugged cross. He shed his blood. And one songwriter asked a question, said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, so even right now in your messed up situation, you can go to God and tell God, forgive me of my sins. So my brothers and sisters this afternoon, when we look at death from the natural eye, it would appear this afternoon that death has had a pretty good track record. And I know some are saying that COVID is on the rampage and COVID is taking folk out. Death been here before COVID got here. If you don't believe it, come go back with me because the Bible said that, that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world. So that tells me that God gave his only begotten son. And the Bible said he died for you and he died for me. He died for Charlene. But the good news is even after dying, the Bible said on the third day morning, he got up from the grave and he died like a natural man. But the Bible said on Sunday morning, he got up and said, I have all power in heaven and earth in my hand. I have conquered death. Death, where is your victory? Grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? So my brothers and sisters, when I look back in the Bible, I see that there were several people who have died before Charlene closed her eyes last week. If you allow me to go back to the book of Genesis, the Bible said that Adam was born without a man or a woman. And the Bible said he died. Eve was born without a man or a woman. And the Bible said and she died. Nor built the great ark, saved the human race and the animals from destruction. And the book says, and she died. Can I get, oh, he died. Abraham was the father of the 12 tribes. And the Bible said, Abraham died. Y'all will help me this afternoon. I know we're outside, but we ought to loose up and let God have his way. The Bible said, Isaac survived being a sacrificial lamb, and he died. Jacob, who, whose, whose son Joseph saved his family during the famine, and the Bible says, and he died. Moses led Egypt out of captivity, and you know who Moses was. Moses was the one who gave excuses, and Moses said, Lord, why would you have me to do that? You know I got a speech impairment, and I can't talk right, and the Lord said, just do what I told you to do, Moses. And the book said, even after doing what the Lord told him to do, he died. What are you saying, Burgess? I'm saying that one day all of us we're going to die. Can I get a witness in here? We all know who signed our death, our birth certificate, but we don't know who's going to sign our death certificate. We all know where we were born at, but we don't know where we're going to die at. But sooner or later, we've got to check out of this place. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, until the New Testament, age had arrived. Death had a most flawless record. Only Enoch in the book of Genesis chapter 5 escaped death by simply walking with God. And the Bible said, and then God took him away. Elijah accepted death by getting separated by a chariot of fire and horses. Of fire, and the Bible said he went up to heaven in a whirlwind. What are you saying, brother preacher? It doesn't matter who you are this afternoon. Sooner or later, death will come knocking at your door. Again, death is supposed to be able to keep you down. Death is supposed to, to end your social calendar. Death is supposed to call loved ones and friends to your grave. But the Bible said, but 2,000 years ago, death died. Can I get a witness to him? Death, act, death died actually before this text. In our text, the Bible said there are three women have gotten up early in the morning. And the Bible said they went to the grave to anoint their friend by the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible said when they last saw Jesus, it was on Friday. Yeah. 
Jesus had died on a Roman cross between two thieves. One on the right and one on the left hand. He was impaled in the hands and in his feet. But however, the Bible gives clarity that he did not die a normal death as others had by the same method. The Bible declares by the preachers that not one bone was broken in his body. But the power of God was in place by maneuvering movement in his body as the nail was piercing through. That was a shining moment this afternoon. Does anybody here know that God has moved your situations and your circumstances? Even in your most powerful and pain moment. And that's what he did with Charlene a few days ago. All the stuff that she was going through, God moved it out of the way. God no doubt said this house that you're living in, it can no longer afford your home anymore. Charlene got an eviction notice a few days ago. Can I get a witness in here? The house that she was living in, it had begun to lean and had some limps in it. And she had some restless nights in this house that she was living in. But, but the Lord said, Charlene, I got a better home for you. A home that was not made by man. The rust and moth cannot come in and destroy it. So my brothers and sisters, even when I was told it was going to be a painful moment. And you weren't going to make it. God made a way for all of us. And I believe this afternoon all of us can be a witness. And we can testify that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Y'all will help me this afternoon. We can stand up and say that God made a way for us. The scripture says that God hung from the sixth hour of the day. In other words, it was around 12 noon to 3 p.m. The Bible said it looked like death had won Jesus. And the Bible said Jesus' last two words looked like death had took him out. Because he said these words that it is finished. And he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But I learned something in this text Friday afternoon. Those were the words of death. Those were the words of victory and a commencement. It is finished. It's not a final assessment of things as they are. They are celebrative statement. And Ross family, I start by to tell you this afternoon, you ought to celebrate today. I know we're going to miss her in the flesh, but in the spirit, she's still with us. We ought to give God some praise and tell the Lord, thank you for the years you allowed her to be on earth. Can I get a witness in him? Father, into thy hands was not just a statement of death, but it was a statement of life. When people die in the Lord, they don't stay dead today. They are in the hands of the almighty God. Whether you believe in going directly to heaven or spending time in rest before resurrection, you're still in good hands by being in the Lord's hand. Can I get a witness in here? The good news is that Jesus died one Friday morning. His heart stopped beeping, beating one Friday morning. His breath stopped one Friday morning. His lungs expel his last breath. Can I get a witness in here? Who is this man by the name of Jesus? Well, he's been called the Rock of Ages. They placed him in a cave in a rock this day. They took my rock, Jesus, and laid him on a rock. And they took a rock and rolled it in front of the rock. And they even ordered some rock security. Are y'all planning with me today? The Bible said he died one Friday, y'all. And he was still dead all Friday night. He was still dead early Saturday morning. And he was still dead late Saturday night. But the Bible said something began to happen, y'all, uh, late in the midnight hour. And God all right today. The Bible said that early one Sunday morning, uh, Jesus got up from the grave and said, I've got all power in heaven and earth in my hand. Ain't God all right today? The Bible said that Adam died and he didn't come back. And Eve died and she didn't come back. Uh, Noah died and didn't come back. Uh, Abraham died and didn't come back. Isaac died and he didn't come back. Uh, Moses died and he didn't come back. Uh, Charlene died, y'all. Uh, but one of these old days, she's going to come back again. Uh, and God all right today. One of these old days, the Bible says uh, that when the trump of God shall sound, all the dead in Christ is going to rise. Uh, 
Ain't God all right? And I don't know about y'all this afternoon, but one of these old days, uh, if you die in the Lord family, you will see Charlene again. Because Gabriel is going to sound his horn, and, and the dead in Christ is going to rise. And I don't know about y'all today, but I look forward to that day, y'all, when all of the saints of God shall get together. We gonna have a time, a mighty good time today. Ain't God all right today? Is there anybody here today to say, I'm so glad today that death can't hold me down. I'm glad that death don't have the last words. I'm so glad today that my life is in God's hand and that which is in the Father's hand. And no man can plug them out. Ain't God all right? I got to leave your family, but hold on to God's unchanging hand because Death don't have the last words. God got the final say so. And one of these old days, we'll meet our sister again on the other side. Family, be encouraged. Charlene loved the Lord. She was not afraid of death. She knew that one day, death will come knocking at her door. I thought about Charlene. And I'm reminded of a salesman. This woman was a salesman. And the company she worked for, they provided her a car to go wherever she needed to go. But one day, while she was traveling, her engine light came on. And she called the office and she told her boss, this car y'all gave me, the engine light has came on. Her boss called the tow truck told him to go pick up the car, took it to the repair shop. She got the car back, the engine light came on again. She called again, the engine light kept coming on. So finally her boss said, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna move you out of that old car and we're gonna put you in another car. Come go with my family. Can I tell y'all what happened with Charlene? Her engine light came on. And she went back to the maker and he told her, I'm gonna give you a glorified body. You don't have to worry about heart trouble anymore. Don't have to worry about COVID anymore because where I am, you will have a glorified body. Family, be blessed, be encouraged. And know this, that Charlene is all right. Charlene wouldn't come back here for nothing because she's at peace. She has a healed body. She's with loved ones who have gone on before. But this is the thing about it. Charlene can't come back here, but we can go where she is. How can I do that, preacher? You must accept Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And you will see her again. Amen? And like we see this house here, that's not how Charlene is no more. She's with Jesus. And the Bible said we will all be as little children. Amen? Amen? Give the Lord a great hand clap of praise as our Sim staff come.
I shall see his face. I shall see his face when it's all over. When it's all over, gonna. Man. 
attention the family has requested if you would please fellowship with them later okay this is their hour amen they, the family has requested this please ma'am and sirs let them let them have their time please this is their request Beyond uh, to be with my Lord. 
attention please yeah. now bow unto the will of our heavenly father who have now taken himself the soul of our deceased sister we do therefore commit her body earth to earth ashes to ashes and dust to dust looking for the general resurrection in the life to come amen I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help, because all of my help cometh from the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. The angels in heaven bow before him. We'd like to say to this family, thank you so much for allowing us uh, this opportunity to serve you. On behalf of Mr. Henderson and the entire CM staff, I pray us that we have provided a service that has been professional and pleasing to you all. God bless you. We're going to ask you all to continue to pray for us, and we will pray for you as well. Amen. Let us bow. Father in heaven, we come again in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have witnessed through the priest's message. Then, God, I pray that you will continue to keep this family as I know you will. Give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. You being the God of all comfort. And God, they're going to need you as days to come. Thank you, God, that we can lean on you. 
and you will never give away. God, we praise you and we glorify your name for all that you do. And we'll continue to lift you up because of you being worthy to be praised and glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the beautiful benediction. Now, by the grace of God and the love of Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest in about each of us henceforth and forevermore. Let us all respond by just saying amen. You are dismissed to your vehicle, family, they will take care of you. Thank mm -hmm. you.